Hello and welcome to Automotive Electrical Troubleshooting Using Schematics Part 1. In this chapter we'll be getting familiar with some of the basic symbols and their descriptions. Created and presented by me, myself, and I, Will Robinson. The Supplemental Inflatable Restraint, SIR, or Supplemental Restraint System, SRS, icon. This icon is used to alert the technician that the system contains SIR or SRS components. This will require certain precautions before servicing. Refer to your vehicle's SIR handling and service precautions prior to proceeding. As illustrated here in a snapshot of a schematic, is a SIR partial circuit. As you can see, the icon in the top right corner. This is just one thing that can happen if you fail to follow precautions. Serious injury and or death in some cases may occur if you don't follow precautions. Onboard Diagnostics, OBD2 icon. This icon is used to alert the technician that the circuit is essential for proper OBD2 emission controls and operation. Any circuit which, if it fails, causes the malfunction mill to turn on is identified as an OBD2 circuit. As illustrated here in a snapshot of the power control modular PCN, and a heated oxygen sensor. It's all part of the OBD2 system as indicated in the top right corner with the icon. The important icon. This icon is used to alert the technician that there is additional information that will aid in servicing a system. As illustrated here in a snapshot of the SIR system, you can see the important icon. Voltage indicator boxes. These boxes are used on schematics to indicate when voltage is present at a fuse. As illustrated here with this 15 amp turn signal fuse. This fuse is hot in on and start position of the ignition switch. A partial component. When a component is represented in a dashed box, the component or its wiring is not shown in its entirety as represented here with the body control modular. All that's being presented is the park lamp relay control and we know the body control modular does much more than just the park and lamp relay control. Therefore it's not shown in its entirely entirety represented by the dash squared box. The entire component. When a component is represented in a solid box, the component or its wiring is shown in its entirety. As illustrated here with the park lamp relay, that's a complete component, therefore it's represented in a square box, solid. The fuse is a type of low resistance resistor that acts as a sacrificial device. It provides overcurrent protection of either the load or source circuit. Its essential component is a metal wire or strip that melts when too much current flows which interrupts the circuit in which it is connected. In this picture you see a common blade fuse and its element. 
in the symbol section I just brought up a color chart. This is a blue fuse, therefore I know it's a 15 amp fuse. Here's the same fuse, and as you notice the element is melted, burned open. That just encountered an overcurrent condition that opened to protect its the circuit that in which it's connected. Here's some more common blade fuse types and a couple more symbols that you may encounter. Fusible link is a type of electrical fuse that is constructed simply with a short piece of wire, typically four American wire gauge size is smaller than the wire that is being protected. For example, a 16 gauge fusible link might be used to protect a 12 gauge wire. Electrical fusible links are common in high current automotive applications. The wire in an electrical fusible link is encased in high temperature fire resistant insulation to reduce hazards when the wire melts. Here's an illustration of a fusible link before a short circuit and after. Take notice to after the short circuit the insulation is bubbled and charred and the wire inside had opened to protect the circuit. A connector attached to a component. Example, a molded sensor that don't have electrical wires leaving it. The connector plugs into the sensor. As illustrated here with a map sensor that has a molded connector attached to the component. Pigtail connection. A device for joining electrical circuits as an interface using mechanical assembly. An electrical joint between two wires or devices. Here's an example of an 8 wire pigtail harness connector. <clears throat> an inline harness connector. A device for joining electrical circuits as an interface using a mechanical assembly. Electrical joint between two harnesses. What I also want you to take note is that C100, that's a reference number, and we'll be covering that at the end of this chapter. And as you can see, the inline harness connector represented here in this picture. A bolt-on or screw-on eyelet terminal. A terminal that bolts on or screws on. Example, most chassis grounds. Here's another example of a starter solenoid that uses eyelet connections. An electrical splice. The joining of wires. The solid dot indicates the joining of wires. Here's a illustration of some splices. Although this is just one example, splices could be made in many different ways, including in the pigtail connections where more than one wire goes to one connection and leaves as one. A pass-through grommet. A ring inserted into a hole through a thin material. Grommets are generally flared or collared on each side to keep them in place and are often made of plastic or rubber. They may be used to prevent tearing or abrasion of a pierced material to cover sharp edges. Here's an example of a pass-through grommet take note of that P100.
That's another reference number we'll be covering at the end of this chapter. The chassis ground. A connection made to the metal chassis to serve as a common return path to the power source. And here's an example of a common chassis ground. The case ground. A connection made to the metal chassis on which the components of a circuit are mounted to serve as a common return path to the power source. In this illustration I use a starter. As you can see connection A goes to the battery positive. Connection B goes to the ignition switch start positive. And the starter uses its case as the ground along with the starter solenoid uses the starter's case. So that is one illustration of a case ground. One of many. A single filament light bulb. Makes light by heating a metal filament wire to a high temperature until it glows. The hot filament is protected from air by a glass bulb that is filled with inert gas. Here's an example which I believe is 1156 single element light bulb. A double filament light bulb. It makes light by heating a metal filament wire to a high temperature until it glows, just like the single filament. However, a double filament bulb uses two filaments of different resistances, one brighter than the other. Some parking and brake lights share a double filament bulb, hence the reason the brake light is brighter than the parking light, because of the two different size filaments. Here's an example of 1157 double filament bulb. As you can see the physical difference in the two filaments. The diode. The most common function of a diode is to allow an electric current to pass in one direction called the diode's forward direction while blocking current in the opposite direction the reverse direction. Thus, the diode can be thought of as an electrical version of a check valve. This unidirectional behavior is called rectification. Rectification. And is used to convert alternating current to direct current. Here's an example of one of many style diodes. The arrow represents the flow of electrons. It goes from the positive to the negative. A light emitting diode, LED, is a semiconductor light source. LEDs are used as indicator lamps in many devices and are increasingly used for other lighting. As you can see, it's in the same family and actually is a diode that emits light. And the current flows in the direction of the arrow from positive to negative. The resistor. A linear resistor is a linear passive, passive two-terminal electrical component that implements electrical resistance as a circuit element. The current through a resistor is in direct proportion to the voltage across the resistor's terminals. Thus, the ratio of voltage applied across the resistor's terminals to the intensity of current through the circuit is called resistance. 
This relation is represented by Ohm's law. And here is an illustration of Ohm's law. The current I that flows in the circuit is directly proportional to the voltage V and inversely proportional to the resistance R. So if you have a circuit and you know the voltage and resistance, you take and you divide and you want to know what the current is, take and divide the voltage and the resistance and I'll give you the current. If you know the current and resistance of a circuit and you want to know the voltage, take and times the current by the resistance. If you know the voltage and the current of a system and you want to know the resistance, take and divide the voltage by the current and that will give you your resistance in Ohm's Law. Here is a description of the color bands on a resistor. As you can see, the top one is a four band code. The first band is green and you go down and that's a five on your color chart. The second band is blue, which is a six. And the third band is your multiplier, which is yellow, 10K. So we have a five and a six, which is 56. And then our multiplier of 10K, which gives us 560K ohm resistor. Now the fourth band, that's your tolerance. And as you can see, that's a gold band. So that's going to be plus or minus 5%. So that gives us a value for that resistor of a 560K ohm plus or minus 5%. A battery. An electrical battery is one or more electrical mechanical cells that convert stored chemical energy into electrical energy. Here's an illustration of a typical top post battery. A variable resistor is constructed so that its resistance value may be changed without interrupting the circuit in which, it's, which it is connected. Used to vary the current in a circuit. Here's an example of some common variable resistors. Take notice to the sound in the next sound clip of the motor while a variable resistor is being turned. And here's some more and here's some more common symbols for the variable resistor. A position sensor is any device that permits position measurements. It can either be an absolute position sensor or a relative one, displacement sensor. And here's a clip out of a schematic of a throttle position sensor. And here is a physical one of many types and styles of a throttle position sensor. A heat element converts electric electricity into heat. Electric current passing through the element encounters resistance resulting in heating of an element. Here's an illustration of an oxygen sensor with a, a heated oxygen sensor. An oxygen sensor cannot operate unless it is reached unless it has reached its operating temperature. By heating the individual oxygen sensor, they reach their active temperature, activation temperature. And as you can see in the illustration, the heating element that help it helps it reach that temperature. And here's an illustration of many styles, one of many style oxygen sensors. A capacitor, formerly known as a condenser. 
is a passive two-terminal electrical component used to store energy in an electric field. The forms of practical capacitors vary widely, but all contain at least two electrical conductors separated by a dielectric insulator. For example, one common construction consists of metal foil separated by thin layers of insulated insulation film. Here are some common pictures of capacitors. An electromagnetic coil, or simply a coil, is formed when a conductor, usually an insulated solid copper wire, is wound around a core or form to create an inductor or electromagnet. As illustrated here in this relay, you can see the copper wire round, wrapped around its core, which creates an electromagnet in return operates the relay. A solenoid is a coil wound into a tightly packed helix. In physics, the term solenoid refers to a long, thin loop of wire often wrapped around a metallic core, which produces a magnetic field when electric current is passed through it. Solenoids are important because they can create controlled magnetic fields and can be used as electromagnets, as in this indication of a fuel injector. Here's another illustration of a fuel injector. I know it's hard to tell, but right here is your coil. When it's energized, it will create an electromagnetic field. And as you can see, the core of the fuel injector is hollow with a pinnel. When energized, the electromagnetic field will lift that pinnel and allow fuel to be metered into the intake manifold. When it's de-energized, the return spring will close the panel. And here is a common fuel, fuel injector. An electric motor converts electricity energy into mechanical energy. Here's one illustration of a fuel pump. A switch is an electrical component that can break an electrical circuit interrupting the current or diverting it from one conductor to another. And here are some common style switches. These are called rocker switches in this illustration. Switches can be of many styles, as you can see here in this picture of a backup light switch, a controlled door switch, and a water temperature switch. A single pole, single throw switch. A simple on-off switch. The two terminals are either connected together or disconnected from each other. An example is a light switch. Here's an example of a rocker single pole single throw switch. You can tell it just has two terminals on the switch. single pole double throw switch. A simple changeover switch. C, the common, is connected to either L1 or L2. As you can tell, you have one common wire that's capable of controlling two circuits. Example, a high-low switch. In this picture, you can see a single pole double throw switch and you could tell by the three terminals, the one common and the two lines.
double pole single throw switch. Equivalent to two single pole single throw switches controlled by a single mechanism. As you can tell from this picture, you have two commons and two lines. They're either open or closed. A double pole double throw switch. Equivalent to two single pole double throw switches controlled by a single mechanism. As you can tell from this picture, you have two commons and four lines. A relay. An electrically operated switch. Many relays use an electromagnet to operate a switching mechanism mechanically. Relays are used where it is necessary to control a circuit by a low power signal with complete electrical insulation between control and controlled circuits or where several circuits must be controlled by one signal. This is a single pole single throw, a simple on off switch. The two terminals are either connected together or disconnected from each other. An example is a light switch. In this picture is a common relay and as you can tell it has its schematic printed on, it, printed on its side illustrating that it's a single pole single throw. Single pole double throw relay. A simple changeover switch. C, the common, is connected to L1 or L2. As you can see with the schematic, terminals 85 and 86 are your control circuit, where 87A and 87 are your line and 30 your common. And here's the pinout. And that leads us to the vehicle zoning. Remember earlier in this chapter, I asked you to try to remember that P100 on that pass through grommet. Well, here's why all grounds, inline connections, pass through grommets, and splices have identifying numbers that correspond to where they are located in the vehicle. As you can see, 100 through 199 is the engine compartment, all toward, all forward of the dash panel. 200 to 299 is within the instrument panel area. 300 to 399 is the passenger compartment from the instrument panel to the rear wheelhouse. 400 to 499 is the, logic, the luggage compartment from the rear wheelhouse to the rear of the vehicle. 500 to 599 is within the left front door. 600 to 699 is within the right front door. 700 to 799 is within the left rear door. Or 800 to 899 is within the right rear door. 900 to 999 is within the luggage compartment lid or hatch. As you can see in the top right, the pass-through grommet from earlier disappeared. It's the P100 that I ask you to remember. So that pass-through grommet, according to this zoning, would be located in the engine compartment forward of the dash. So it gives you a good reference point on looking at the schematic where you can find the pass-through grommets. The next one I ask you to remember was the S100 to splice and according to that reference number it's located in the engine compartment forward from the dash panel. And the one that just came up to the top right was a snapshot I took of a schematic where with the fuel pump circuit. And as you can see 
the connection C405. We know that's a connector, an inline connector, and 405 would be the luggage compartment from the rear wheelhouse to the rear of the vehicle. So that'll give us a general direction and a good starting point to find that inline connector. Well, that's going to conclude this chapter. I'd like to thank you for watching. Part 2 is coming soon. Feel free to come visit me at toolsintime.com. I'd like to make it a place where we can come together and share our knowledge at a free to join forum. I will also be posting video updates and quizzes along the way on this series and more, along with some helpful reference charts. Refer back to this video, study the symbols and icons to the point you don't need the reference charts as much. There are many symbols I didn't have time to cover in this chapter, however we'll cover them along the way as needed. Like always guys, I'd like to thank you and hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe to see more. Have a good one.